Welcome back to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast, and I'm your host, T.W., flying solo for now. As you know, BQ is usually with me on this one, but he's got some uh, some scheduling conflicts, and he'll be back with us sooner rather than later. But in the meantime, I'm going to hold us down. So just sit tight right where you are, and let's get into this Impact Talk. Now, before we do that, I need you to go ahead and do us a favor here at the page. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button so that you subscribe to the channel, get our numbers up. Go ahead and hit the uh, like button, give us, you know, a little boost, give a thumbs up to this video, and go ahead and hit that notification button so that you get notified any and every time we drop some new content on this page, okay? You love it. We love to give it to you, so we want to make sure you know when it's coming out, all right? Now... Let's not bury the lead. Let's get right to it. Impact had some huge news this week when we found out that Don Callis is going to be out as an executive at Impact Wrestling. He's going to be continuing as a talent, but his executive role has been coming to an end for a little over a month now. Now, this is coming courtesy of PW Insider. And I got to tell you, Mike Johnson, PW Insider, is really the only source that I truly trust when it comes to Impact Wrestling. And the reason why is simple. Um, a lot of these, you know, wrestling news sites cover Impact with such a slanted way. You know, like, listen, everybody is entitled to like what they like, whatever they like, don't like whatever they like. And you got to give your, uh, your, your viewers, your listeners, the content that's true to who you are, right? Like, so... If, if if my if, if if my whole shtick is I'm a critic, then I'm not gonna come and tell you what's good about a product. I'm gonna just come tell you what I don't like about a product because I'm a critic and my people come to me for criticism, right? And there's a lot of wrestling reporters, wrestling journals, whatever you want to call them, who are just critics. They're just critics, and their job is to tear stuff down. And honestly, with so many of these guys. I just would see them talk about Impact in a way that was just constantly tearing down Impact. I always felt that Mike Johnson's coverage of Impact was fair. Um, whether you liked it or not, he didn't necessarily seem to have an axe to grind with Impact Wrestling as much as some other, you know, uh, wrestling writers seemed like they had some sort of axe to grind, you know, with Dixie or, you know, or Jeff Jarrett or whoever. But just the coverage of Impact was so negative, so slanted, that it just made me not trust anything they would have to say on Impact. Um, Mike Johnson, I felt like, has always been level. Um, he was right there covering all the news from the, the Dixie trial, the Dixie Billy Corbin trial. And he's just, you know, always been there. So, you know, if you guys are looking for other sources besides ourselves for, <laughs> for Impact Wrestling News, um, Mike Johnson of PW Insider is somebody who I would co-sign his, his, his content, recommend it. If you're an Impact fan, he is probably the best person to follow for news on the show. Or, or on the product, on the company, all about it. And when he reported on his site that Don Callis is stepping down as an executive of Impact, that's how I knew it was true, okay? Um, he's obviously well-connected. I already told you all the reasons why I trust his, his reporting. And you can guarantee that other people have the exact same reasoning for why they trust his reporting. Now, when you're an insider and people trust your reporting, you're going to have sources within the company. So I said all that just to say, if Mike Johnson says it about impact, you can usually take it to the bank. You know, nothing is ever 100% sure, but I wouldn't be regurgitating this coming from just anybody. Um, because people have been, you know, reporting in some form or fashion that Don Callis was kind of stepping back from his role in impact. People have been reporting that for a while, but I didn't trust it until I saw it come from Mike Johnson, the PW Insider. So, that's a long way to get to what I have to say now, which is, it's true. It's a thing. Don Callis is stepping down as an executive, but he's still going to work with Impact Wrestling as a talent. Now, why is this big news? Well, to me, it's big news because I believe that Don Callis had a lot to do 
with putting together the working relationship with AEW, which no matter what anybody wants to say, has been huge for Impact Wrestling. One of the biggest topics of conversation concerning Impact Wrestling, as a matter of fact, the biggest topic of conversation concerning Impact Wrestling has been their relationship with AEW, their working partnership, and how so many people feel it's unbalanced and, and just slanted in AEW's favor, right? But you take AEW out of the equation, what are we talking about with Impact? Maybe a couple of people popping up from New Japan, you know, you know, maybe what's going on with Violet by Design, you know, nothing wrong with that, but the AEW stuff has been huge news. So, with Don Callis stepping back from his executive role, just going to be a talent with Impact, and eventually probably going to become a full-time talent with AEW, you got to wonder, is this going to affect Impact's relationship with AEW? Are we going to see more of the working partnership between Impact Wrestling and AEW? Um, you know, you, you got to wonder. You, I also got to wonder, you know, how much did Don Callis have to do with the creative direction of Impact Wrestling? You know, are we going to see some sort of shifts in who's getting pushed and who isn't? You know, what type of people were Don Callis's favorite? What type of, you know, influence did he have on, you know, touring versus taping? Um, uh, uh, over, over, you know, what type of venues to pick? There's so many things that, someone who was in an executive role is in charge of. And I just got to know which of those things are we going to see some sort of difference in. Now, according to Mike Johnson, Scott Demore has been in charge of the day-to-day -day at Impact Wrestling. So he doesn't seem to think that Callis stepping down is really going to affect the whole product too much. So, you know, I guess it remains to be seen. Um, but for me, I think this is, you know, one of those sneaky big deals that, you know, we just don't, we don't know how it's going to, how it's going to uh, affect everything in the long term. You know, we don't know, again, how many booking decisions were Scott Demore, how many booking decisions were Don Callis, you know, um, it, we're, we're all kind of just left waiting and wondering what's coming next in terms of these talents um, and, 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 and the direction of impact with, uh, Scott Nemore at the head and Don Callis stepping down. This week on the show, we had Jake something versus Rohit Raju. And Rohit got the win when they did the old spot from SummerSlam with the Ultimate Warrior Rick Rude, where Bobby Heenan held the Ultimate Warrior's legs uh, while the Warrior was trying to suplex Rick Rude back inside the ring. And Rick Rude fell on top of Ultimate Warrior and got the pin. They did this spot where Shira was playing the role of Bobby Heenan. He grabbed Jake Something's leg. And uh, and 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 Rohit just fell on top of uh, on Jake something so he could get the he get the cover. Now I mentioned this a few weeks ago. Jake something has been losing a lot lately, which just seems odd, right? Because this guy is one of the people that should be the pillar of this a pillar of this company going forward. You know, he's a star that hasn't been on WWE TV. He hasn't been on AEW TV. He's basically new to the audience. And so if you're Impact, you need as many guys like that as possible. People who look like they could be big time stars, but people don't recognize them as being someone who was made in WWE. You need to find any and everybody who you can that fits that mold and put them front and center on your show. And Jake something is one of those people who would be in that category, right? Now, he's been losing a lot lately. And to me, I just always thought that was really weird. I was like, this has to be going somewhere because this is not a guy who should be losing so many matches. And sure enough, it kind of came to fruition a little bit after this match. So Jake something loses, like I told you, and then he just goes crazy. He's, he, he snaps, he's losing it. He's beating Rohit. Rohit is, uh, I so say he's trying to get to Rohit and Rohit runs out of the ring and he runs up the ramp 
And then it's Shira and Jake something in the ring. And of course, Jake is giving him the business. Jake actually picks up Shira and, and runs him through a table. And the whole time, Rohit is just on the stage kind of watching. He wouldn't help his boy at all. You know, totally cowardly hill type thing. So it's actually really good work by you, Rohit. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we just got to see Jake something kind of lose it. Um, Matt Stryker mentioned on commentary that Jake has been kind of looking for his edge. And ever since his team broke up, he wasn't quite sure exactly, you know, what to do. And this makes perfect sense. Um, I like doing this with Jake. I like for him to be somebody that, you know, whatever is the route you take, right? He's got to get to a point where he is dominant. He's bigger than half the people on your roster. You know, he looks like a million bucks. He's 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 got big muscles. He's tall. You know, he's just, he looks like a pro wrestler. And so this is a guy who, again, needs to be winning. He needs to be featured front and center on Impact's programming. So however you got to get there, if he's got to, you know, go crazy over losing some, then I'm totally fine with that. Everybody does not have to have an undefeated streak like Goldberg uh, in order to become a big star. However you got to do it to build this character and to get this guy to main event status, go right ahead and do that. We had a lot of confusion with the knockouts. Um, you know, there was a match that I didn't remember who was in the match to start. I just know the whole thing ended up in a huge brawl where it was uh, fire and flavor. Deanna Perrazzo and her goons, uh, Kimberly and, and 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 Susan, they were beating up on Tennille Dashwood and um, and and Taylor Wilde. And you know, we had a big brawl in the ring, and then all of a sudden, Havoc comes out, and she's just clearing the ring of all the bad guys. They run out, and as the bad guys run out, Decay comes out to the stage, so the bad guys scatter like roaches, and it obviously, they were setting up something big, because this week, we got a 10 knockout match with pretty much all those people that I just mentioned, and I'm interested to see where this is going to go going forward. Now, actually, in that match is... The, the match for next week is going to be Rachel Ellering, who you'll hear more about the interesting night that she had on this episode uh, going forward. So speaking of Rachel Ellering, after this segment was over with, you know, everybody and their mom coming out to get in the, uh, get in, in, interfere in the match, we go backstage and we see Jordan Grace walking up to Rachel Ellering and basically telling her, hey, I got us a match for tonight. And Rachel's like, oh, great. With who? Rachel thinks they're going to do a tag team match. And Jordan says, against each other. And you just see Rachel Ellering looking kind of puzzled. She can't understand why Jordan would want to fight her when they were just tag team partners, tag team champions a few days ago. So that was a little bit of a cliffhanger. We were, uh, we, we knew we were going to get that match later, but... It didn't look like Rachel Ellering was totally into it. So, uh, you know, we'd have to see how that would play out. Uh, Petey Williams went against VSK. You know, that wasn't really much to see. Uh, Petey won with the Canadian Destroyer. Of course he was going to win with the Canadian Destroyer. What else was going to possibly happen there? Um, we got a Swingers Palace segment where they basically set up a tag team match between TJP and Fala Ba and Petey Williams and Josh Alexander. And I'm pretty sure Petey Williams and TJP were just tag team partners at Under Siege. So, <sighs> who knows, right? Why build up a tag team when they could just meet up in Swingers Palace and book their own match? You know, who knows? <laughs> um, now, this was my favorite segment of the show. Moose came out to the ring and... He was cutting a promo on Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega and Don Callis come out, and, you know, Don is talking trash to Moose. But the whole time, Moose is staring daggers at Kenny Omega. So eventually, Kenny gets in Moose's face, and he tells him he could take Moose out with one one-winged angel. And Moose says, I'd like to see you try. And, of course, the lackeys, the good brothers, come down to the ring, and they break up the whole thing. Well, actually, they were getting ready to jump Moose. But Sammy Callahan comes out to kind of even the odds a little bit. And Kenny and the Good Brothers, they, you know, run away. So then we get backstage. And Moose kind of confronts Sammy Callahan. He's like, yo, I hope you're not expecting an apology. 
I had that all under control, which obviously he didn't, but whatever. And Sammy Callahan basically tells Moose, hey, man, I didn't do that for you. I did that because I want what's mine, and that's the, the Impact World Championship. And listen, I, I think there's there's some seeds being planted here for some sort of plot twist. I think that we all kind of think we see where this is going, but I think there's some seeds being planted here for Sammy Callahan to potentially be the guy that ends up taking that title. All right, so we get Jordan Grace versus Rachel Ellering. Now, this match was actually pretty good because they were telling a story throughout this whole match. We got to see Jordan putting pressure on Rachel Ellering by doing more and more kind of heelish things. And Rachel really wanted to keep it, you know, very honorable. She wanted to, you know, make sure they stayed friendly throughout the match. But as the match just went on, Jordan was just trying more and more things, you know, more and more little uh, heelish tactics. And you could just see it building to Jordan kind of snapping and just really, you know, going heel on Rachel Ellering. Now, Rachel Ellering won the match. She won with a roll-up, and you can just see this frustration on Jordan Grace's face. And, you know, Jordan, she's kind of talked herself into it. She's like, hey, you got me. You know, I'll, 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 I'll head on back to the locker room. And as she's walking away, Rachel Ellering just looks confused as to what's going on. So they're doing a good job kind of planting seeds for Jordan Grace's eventual heel turn. And I think that's good. Jordan Grace has done pretty much everything there is to do uh, in the knockouts division. So she's going to be here for a while. She just re-signed with Impact. It makes sense to try something different for her character, something we haven't seen her do. And I think it's a great idea. It could be a nice shot in the arm for the knockouts division. We got to see Brian Myers backstage. And he's he was, he was mentioning how upset he was that Matt Cardona wasted his shot uh, in, in the sixth way at Under Siege when he had already beaten Matt Cardona. Now, it just so happens that Matt Cardona's walking out of the locker room as Brian Myers is giving his interview. And what does Brian Myers do but attack Matt Cardona from behind? So we're going to get more Brian Myers and Matt Cardona. I'm totally okay with that. I mean, these guys are friends. I think that there is a great chance that these guys have phenomenal chemistry in the ring. And... I'm down to see, you know, whatever match they want to do. All right. We got our main event, which was Finjuice defending their titles against Madman Fulton and Ace Austin. Now, I thought this could have easily been a win for Fulton and Ace Austin. Why? Because Ace Austin is, again, another one of those pillar guys. Another one of those guys who really shouldn't be losing to anybody. He should be looking strong as possible uh, until he comes up in, you know, another big match against one of the other pillar guys. Those guys should be beating everybody. Those should be your fan favorites that you build or fan favorites or, you know, fan most hated that you're building the company around going forward, especially as we're starting to get people back at wrestling shows. Um, but they didn't win. Finn Juice won. It was a good match. A lot of back and forth. Finn Juice won. And then after the match, we got Violent by Design to come out for the big plot twist at the end of the show. Rhino cast it, cashed in his Call Your Shot gauntlet trophy, and Rhino and Joe Doring are now the Impact World Tag Team Champions, and that's how the show went off the air. So I thought it was a good show. Uh, they advanced a lot of storylines. A lot of times you see wrestling shows where it seems like the characters are just kind of running in place not really advancing any storylines, just doing the same thing over and over, same matches over and over, same opponents over and over. And it looked like on this show, Impact moved a lot of stories forward. So I thought that was a good thing. Now, I'm going to debut a little segment that I'm going to call World Title Watch, right? Because we are all, if you're an Impact fan, you have to be very interested into who could potentially bring the Impact World Championship back in the fold for Impact and get it off of Kenny Omega. Now, right now, Moose looks like the top contender, but you got to wonder about his contract. Now, I saw some rumors today that Moose has actually re-signed with Impact Wrestling. 
I don't know if this is true. I haven't heard it from Mike Johnson, PW Insider. But, you know, once I get some confirmation, then I'll actually talk about it as though it's fact. As of right now, it's just a rumor. So we saw a rumor that Moose has re-signed with Impact Wrestling. But we've seen lots of other things say that his contract is soon to be up. And if his contract is soon to be up as soon as next month, which is June, then I can't see Impact putting the title on him for, you know, any extended uh, amount of time. So, uh, could it be Moose? It should be Moose. But if that's the case, if his contract is up, I don't know that it will be Moose. Now, Sammy Callahan, he might be someone who's a better choice. And the reason why I say that is because Sammy Callahan is a guy that is proud to be an impact. He's somebody that I think would stay an impact for his entire career if, you know, if the money is right. Um, he might be a guy that you want to take that title off Kenny Omega because he's a real impact guy. And so, I don't know. And, and he keeps kind of hanging around the world title picture. I would not be shocked, man. I, I got to tell you, I would not be shocked if we look up and find some way, somehow, even though it was highly, highly, highly unexpected, I would not be terribly shocked if we look up and see that Sammy Callahan has some way weaseled his way in the world title in his hands. That just would not, wouldn't surprise me at all. Okay, and now it's time for some questions from the comment section. This is where I respond to some of the comments you leave under this YouTube video and just go ahead and make sure you drop your name and where you're from so I can give you a proper shout out as I get to your question. So we got Bland Skies 28 who says, it seems more and more like 95% of their best talent are just the X Division wrestlers. That is not good. Not saying that X Division wrestlers are bad, but they need more of a mix of bigger wrestlers that can go in the ring. Currently, they don't have that. Um, I, You know, I kind of agree with that. I don't have anything against X Division wrestlers, but right, I agree. I think that wrestling is supposed to feel like an attraction, right? Like any TV show you watch, you want there to be some sort of wow factor. And I just think that when the guys wrestling on TV look like your next door neighbor, it loses that wow factor. You know, when the guys wrestling on TV look like someone out of a bodybuilding magazine, you're like, man, that guy is super strong. This is going to be crazy to watch. So I I got to agree with you, Blance, guys. I, I think you're, you're probably right. They could probably stand to get some more big guys in prominent roles. I think, you know, give Moose a chance. You know, let's see what Moose can do as a feature player. Um, you got Jake something. You got W. Morrissey, um, who I didn't even mention, but I, I like uh, – the idea of a Jake, excuse me, a W. Morrissey, Rich Swan feud. That's the perfect contrast of big guy versus little guy. And I think they could probably have some really good matches together. So, you know, more big guys is not a bad thing. All right, Bold Fast 94 says, the tag division is really bad. And they seem to just put random wrestlers together and think that is good enough. Like, what is this? Who thinks this is good booking? This is some WWE level nonsense. Uh, you know, it's it's not quite as bad as WWE, but it's not good. It's not good. You're right. Tag division could use some consistent building of teams. And I talked about it, right? They did the Swingers Palace where they had all the teams just kind of come there and make their own match. To me, I would much rather see, you know, you take four teams that are contenders. And let me see all these four teams winning matches for a few weeks. And then put them against each other so it can be like, wow, who is going to win out of these teams? Because they've all just been beating everybody else. But instead, we're just going to bump into each other at Swingers Palace, and now we have a match. All right. Luke Avery says, I think Eddie Edwards will either face Kenny Omega for the World Heavyweight Championship or the Great Muda for the GHC Championship if Japan allows wrestlers to travel in July for Slammiversary. That's interesting. I do wonder what Eddie Edwards will be doing. Eddie Edwards actually just had a surgery. So uh, hopefully Eddie Edwards is okay. But, you know, who knows? That certainly could be a possibility. All right, Danielle Wolf. She says, 
Why why down left? He knows he's the one who messed up. Uh, I guess, you know, this is the Danielle, what you're assuming here is that Don is the one who created the partnership with AEW and he somehow messed it up. I don't know. I don't see where the mess up is, though. I got to tell you, I think fans are just looking at this AEW Impact thing in the wrong way. Impact is just getting use of some AEW talent to help try to draw eyes to their product and pay-per-views, pay-per-view buys. And listen, if you believe what Dave Meltzer said, it's been working. Uh, Kobe F says, I'm so tired of Swingers Palace. Just have them come to the ring and get beat. He's an entertaining character, but they rely on Swingers Palace to tell the stories. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. Um, and Carter Inc. says, Under Siege was a really good show, and all the right people actually won for a change. Moose is the guy. Deanna Perrazzo is the best female wrestler in the world right now. She needs to hold the knockouts title for a long while to come, and Josh versus Phantasmo is indeed the match of the night. Thank God Josh won clean, and we and he was made to look strong. All right, so, yeah, I mean, it wasn't really a question, but, I, you know, I agree with a lot of what you said. So, yeah, that's that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all we got for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, please like, rate, comment, subscribe like we talked about before. Share this conversation with a friend. Bring more people into the fold. We love you, and we thank you for enjoying the show. I'm TW. Peace out.